Hello, I'm Fred Masudi from the University of Colorado, and I'm honored to be here today with Dr. Harlan Krumholtz from Yale University, who's the recipient of this year's AHA Quality of Care and Outcomes Research Council Outstanding Achievement Award. Harlan, congratulations on your award. Thanks very much, Fred. Harlan, I wonder if you could start by telling us a little bit about how you became interested in outcomes research to begin with. Boy, um, you know, an award like this, you do reflect a little bit back on your history and the kind of things that got you interested in, in this kind of work. When I was in high school and college, actually I spent time in, in research labs doing more basic research. And I think over time I was drawn, I was drawn to thinking about the way in which care is delivered and the, the kind of fairness of it and the degree to which we're really being effective in helping improve people's lives, the health of populations. When I was in college, I had spent a semester in rural North Carolina working in nurse practitioner-based clinics. And uh, it got me very interested in this idea about how we could design better healthcare systems. And, also, I enjoyed the interactions with patients, and I thought, gee, I want to really be doing work that's going to be putting me in contact with patients and producing knowledge that might really help us do a better job for them. That's fascinating. Can you tell us a little bit, you've, you know, and you've accomplished so much in your career, which is obviously why you won this award. Can you tell us about maybe what you think is your, your greatest accomplishment or your proudest accomplishment? Well, let me say, you know, I find it a little, I'm going to talk about this a little bit tonight. It's almost a little embarrassing to these individual awards. You know, I'm actually very proud that maybe my peers uh, thought I was worthy of this, but I'm very cognizant of the fact that any success I've had has been because of the kind of teams that I've been working with. And, and as you know, in our work, it's really not what an individual does. It's how we work together. If I thought there was a secret ingredient to the success that I've had with our teams, and you know, you and I have worked together a lot, and, and and with many other people, it's, it's the idea of trying to find common ground. It's trying to find strategic partnerships to work together with other people and be as creative as you can, but also find ways in which that work can connect into action so that it can actually benefit other people. And then feedback to us as we think about what the next thing we ought to be looking at is. So, you know, I think the proudest thing for me is that we've been able to create a, a community that's, you know, forged in generosity and in comradeship and, and that we've been able to work together, so many people. I mean, when I look back on the projects I've had, there are just so many people that have been involved and have contributed importantly to that body of work. It's no way it's just one person. And, and you know, when we think about the outcomes community when we first started with the initial meeting and then to become a council and the publication and the kind of, of relationships that have been fostered through the work that we've done together, I mean, that's really what I'm Proud of stuff, and then the people who are following us, you know, seeing that there's a generation that's picking up what we started and expanding and doing better than we were in terms of really uh, both doing the research but uh, expanding the base of people who are interested in this work. When we first started, remember, it was we were really on the sidelines. I mean, we we're like the JV, and people were kind of like, well, what's this all about? Over time, and uh, you know, this has become mainstream. There's a lot of people interested in this now, and and anyway, I think it's like all of us can feel, I think, proud to think that there there is a community that exists. It's expanding, it's inclusive, and uh, we all look to do good work together, not so much to compete against each other. Speaking of the, the junior investigators, you mentioned this, the trainees, junior investigators. What do you have to say to, and what advice do you have to give to the junior investigators and trainees who have an interest in outcomes research? Yeah, well, uh, welcome. You know, we're glad you're here. We need you. We need a lot of good, talented people here. And there's so much good and important work to be done What's, in, what's really key for you is to find a place where it doesn't feel like work. Find a place where the questions are stimulating enough to you that you feel they're meaningful enough, they give you a reason to get up in the morning, and, and then find a way for that work to, to connect with something outside of the research that, you know, figure out how the knowledge you're generating is actually going to help improve patients' lives. So that it, the translation piece as well as the knowledge generation piece need to be intimately entwined. But, but I guess mostly I'm just telling them welcome. You know, we really need you. We look forward to seeing you, and, and we want to help you. And, and we need to find more people who are working in this space so that we can all, all collaborate <clears throat> across a broader range of areas and regions in the country and bring evidence-based uh, clinical care and evidence-based decision-making and evidence-based policy together so that we can improve the way in which we're delivering care. Well, I think that's great advice. Well, thanks, Dr. Parmolton. Again, congratulations on your award. Thanks so much for it.